right, we're live. Hey everyone, it's Marcus at the Barker Branch. Uh, thanks for joining us for our panel on once again. Uh, we're just going to get right into it. So, uh, if this is your first time watching, um, this is like a virtual version of the panel along we used to do at the library, where basically I just walk you through, uh, used to do landscape paintings, but I've been wanting to branch out more uh, from that, but we're kind of just doing landscape right now. Um, but yeah, we're doing like oil paintings, like kind of in the style of Bob Ross, but uh, because of the pandemic and everything, we've been doing them all virtually. So uh, thanks for thanks for uh, showing up for this one. But like I said, we're just gonna get right into it. So what we're doing today is I haven't done like a desert painting in a while, so um, it's gonna be kind of like kind of like the Utah desert where it's all like big square rock formations and like red rocks and stuff. So um, it's pretty much what it's gonna be. Um, yeah, it'll be like some big rocks in the background, maybe like one of those arches. Uh, it should be cool. So let me go over some materials really quick. Uh, we're gonna be using oils today. We haven't done oils in a while. We've been mostly acrylics, but you're gonna need a bunch of paint brushes. You know, probably don't need this many, but uh, some essential ones are some either one or two inch brushes. Basically, some big brushes that let you put a bunch of paint and cover a lot of area at once and with the blending. Um, some smaller brushes, like a square brush. This is a fan brush. It's good for like flat shapes, like clouds and trees and stuff. Uh, some smaller brushes. Like this is a round brush. This is just a some random brush I found in the library closet. Um, I have a liner brush right now, which is like a really thin uh, brush, good for like tree branches and stuff. Um, mine got kind of worn out, so we probably won't need it today anyways, but that's kind of a good substitute, just like a tiny brush like that. Uh, a palette knife. It's not for cutting things. It's for putting down paint like flat, shapes and like kind of like scraping and smearing um, and this is a blender brush it has really soft bristles and it's good for uh blending and mixing stuff on the canvas we're probably not going to use that but it's cool to have and i think that's about it um sometimes it's good to have multiple of the same brush like i have two of each of those but not completely necessary uh, you're gonna want a rag. This is in a lot of use because uh, painting gets messy. Speaking of, you're gonna want to wear some old clothing. This is like it's a polo shirt, so it's good for the work. But uh, I always wear the same shirt when I'm doing the painting program. You can see I've got paint all over the sun and everything. Um, you think you're gonna be clean and not get paint on yourself, but it happens every time. So wear old clothes. Uh, since these are oil paints, they don't wash off with water. So if you want to clean your brush or even use it to thin them, um, you'll want some mineral spirits or paint there. I don't know if I can show you what's in there, but uh, I just keep it in this little jar. It has like a little metal like mesh on the bottom so you can scrape your brush and get all the pigment off and then the pigment goes to the bottom and then all the clean mineral stays like on top and you can reuse it. You just keep this sealed and Use it over and over. Um, and then, of course, you're going to want paints. These are actually the uh, official Bob Ross paints. But uh, I think this is all the colors we're going to need today. It's uh, yellow ochre, midnight black, Prussian blue, dark sienna, Van Dyke brown, and alizarin crimson. A lot of really warm, earthy colors. And titanium white. Got a big jar for this because use a lot of weight. Uh, and then I think, I think lastly, no, not lastly, but uh, palette. Um, this is supposed to be clear, but it's again seen a lot of use, so it's all covered in paint. But uh, you can even use like a paper plate if you don't have one of the one of these. Uh, little tip, because I didn't know this when I first started painting. You hold it this way. You don't hold it like this. Um, yeah, treat this little part like it's a handle 
and just grab it and let it rest on your arm. That way you don't get, your hand don't, doesn't get all fatigued when you're in pain. So just hold it like this. Don't grip it really hard, just let it rest. Relax, just pain. Um, and then you're going to want a good sturdy canvas. Um, some people go as far as making their own canvas out of like canvas gesso and wood frame, but they, they sell these for like really cheap, but wherever. Um, and you want probably a good sturdy easel or I'm just using the like board that's in, in the library meeting room and it's on here with like Velcro sticky stuff. But uh, yeah, you want a good uh, quality canvas that's gonna hold your paint and be sturdy and take the beating. So you don't want to use just paper. It's not going to work. It's going to get all curled up and, and mushy. So I think that's everything. Oh, uh, when you're using oil paints, you probably want a trash can or dustbin or something. Um, down here, you probably can't see it. But when you uh, clean off your brushes, you want to get all the paint thinner off. So it's good to just kind of like whack it inside the, the dust, dustbin and get all of that off. So it's kind of fun to do that. So without further ado, I guess let's get started, huh? One second. Okay. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do because this is a wet on wet style painting, is we're gonna use some, uh, Bob calls this either magic white or liquid white, but uh, it's just white paint and linseed oil. Uh, oil paint is made out of linseed oil, so you're basically just adding more oil to it to thin it down. But what this is gonna do is we're gonna cover the entire canvas in it, and that's gonna make it really nice and wet and slick and let us blend stuff on the canvas itself. That's a really easy and fast method of doing the landscape paintings. This makes it like a white spin kind of sitting a while, so there's some chunks of in there, but you just scrape it off. Can we use it a little bit of texture? But the uh, cool thing about this is the linseed oil that I used in this town is really yellow, so it made it makes this kind of off white, which is cool because you can actually see a lot better where you put this. And it's going to dry basically like the same color, so it's not going to hurt much. But uh, during this step, you want to put as little as possible. You want to put just as much as you need to get the canvas really slick. Like act like you're just putting it on like a molecule thick. Because if you put too much, the canvas is going to get really uh, goopy, as I like to call it. And, uh, Later, when you go to put paint on it, instead of paint going from your brush to the canvas, it's going to go from the canvas to your brush. It's going to be impossible to lay paint on this. You're going to become a mud mixer. That's what Bob says. Can't really see. Sometimes it's good to like get on your knees and look up at it and see which parts are not shiny. And just really scrub that in. Across 
the only brush marks down, make sure it's even. Do any brush hairs on there, just kind of flick it off. That should be good. The brush should be really smooth across this. It should just slide around a bit. Okay. So the cool thing about oil paints is they take forever to dry. Um, like acrylic paints will take 10 minutes to dry, oil paints will take like weeks. So you have all the time in the world to do your painting. I mean, not all the time, you have a few weeks, but you don't have to worry about like with acrylics, sometimes you have to spray it with water to like keep it from drying on you. Oils. Yeah, we can just uh, take our dang old time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a yellowish reddish sky up there. So I'm going to put down some. If I was good at preparing for this kind of stuff, I would have had these on my palette already, ready to go. But... Oh. So I'm going to take a palette knife. It's good for like mixing things. and get a little bit of yellow and red. I'm going to kind of mix that in the middle here. I want more yellow than red because the red is strong. Okay, so you just scrape it up and smear it. Scrape it up, smear it. Keep doing that until it's all mixed. It's probably a little too big. One, one yellow in there. Be kind of a golden color. Take my big two inch brush. I just got paint on my fingers. See, you think you're being clean, but uh, it's going to get on there. So I'm going to take some of that orange color and starting from the top, we're going to go like this in these X strokes. And what's going to happen is that paint's going to be really pronounced at the top, but as we come down, the paint's going to run out. Kind of fade into the white. See if I can. So let's go again, start from the top. And just work your way down, and as that paint runs out on your brush, you should fade into the white. Bed. Basically, just do this until you're happy with it. That's good enough. This hair keeps getting on my hands. There we go. Try to paint it. Okay. That should be good. So I'm going to take my other brush, which is dry, and really lightly go across. And we're going to kind of blend this all together, get all those little lines and brush strokes out, and make it really soft. There we go. 
See all these kind of like white parts in there? Almost looks like mist up in the sky. They're like really soft clouds. Okay, so next. Take my power knife and I'm gonna try to get like a really, really light bluish gray color out of the thing cap on this. Come on. Ah. Prussian blue. Uh, need some black on here. And try some white. Now I'm gonna mix some really light gray color. So for that, I'm gonna get a lot of white, a little bit of blue, tiny bit of black. That is about a tiny bit of gross. So I'm gonna mix that up. Mix in a little bit of red too. That's good. That is perfect, actually. Yeah, so that's the color we're looking for. So let's get some of this on our knife and Kind of up here, like about halfway up, I'm gonna kind of lay in some really far mountains. Maybe there's a few peaks that we can distinguish, but mostly it's just gonna be this kind of flat, flat mountain range. I'm mostly just focusing on that top part right there. I'm just kind of smearing it down. Maybe it goes all the way across. I'm going to do like a big rock right here so that I don't really focus on that part. Scrape it on there. I'm not going to hurt the canvas or anything. Okay. So now I'm going to take one of my smaller brushes and just kind of pull all this down. Blend it all out. And then at the bottom, just kind of come back and forth and really blend that into the rest of the color. Just like that. You don't even have to be, you don't have to care too much about the bottom because we're going to kind of cover most of it with more mountains. But that looks good. Okay, what next? Um, I think what we're going to do is. I have the same idea, kind of this bluish, reddish color, but a bit darker. So I'm going to get some blue, touch of red and yellow. 
little bit of black, it's kind of dark in there. So now what we'll do is take the hem, I want to be a little darker. Some of this color and let's make this big old rock. Just kind of going down the top of it. too light, so I'm going to put a little more blue and black on there and kind of darken it. That's better. Uh, like I always just say, nature isn't a bunch of perfect shapes. You want to get some ruggedness in this rock. You want parts to stick up and stick out. And there's like this big rock right here kind of sticking up. So, what they call you know, like some bitmies in Utah.
So I'm gonna blend all this in a second. First, it's good to kind of come back and let me scrape off all the excess paint. It's, it's gonna be too goopy to lay any highlights on top of it. Not. Such a good word, goopy. Okay, so let's take our take this brush and we're just gonna kind of come down and pull this all together. I think we need more rocks over there. Some big rocks kind of right here. to blend this with like this plane. Okay, good. 
So the forwards kind of just blend the inside of that and pull it downwards. My highlights is seen. Next is some brown and a little bit of like yellow and red too. Oh, there's a leaking up one. Ah. It's okay. So take some of this brown and add some red. Yellow and mix this all up together. So let's take some of this orange color. Uh, just lay it in there. It's back and forth. As we go, kind of lightly come up and blend that with that blue. Now we're going to go over this and add some highlights. I'm going to kind of clear it out here because I've used up a lot of room. brownish goldish color. Okay, so we're gonna add some highlights up here. So with your knife, I'm just gonna get some paint on the edge of my knife here and kind of try to see where these ridges are gonna be. Kind of like there's one. 
there. And you want to lay these down as wide as possible. And don't be afraid to be a little messy and rugged. So that's going to make you look a lot more natural and rocky. Honest, this should be a little lighter than that. So I'm going to add some more yellow and white. Sometimes pain is just trial and error. Like, oops, that's, that doesn't look right. Let's try this. That's better. Spots of here that catching some light. See, like when I'm doing it, it'd be rarely light and kind of just let the paint kind of smear around, get some cool, like rocky shapes as the paint kind of breaks up. down here. Sometimes there's not really any rhyme or reason to this. You just kind of go for it and see what happens. I don't want to smear around like some of this color down here. Just make it a little less uniform. I can go over there and blend it.
That's looking good. All right. So next, what we're going to do? Blend a little more of this. So next, we're going to put kind of the big arch here in the foreground. So for that, we're going to need a knife. A lot of knife work with this one. So this one's going to be pretty dark, so we're going to need some black. some red. to rest on top of. Getting a lot of goopiness here. Sometimes you just gotta scrape it off. You can get like a little paper towel. Good. Let's take our brush, blend that. Actually, that'd be good to just add the arch while we're doing that. Let's take some of this and Down. 
things and kind of came back there at the top here. I've said this before, but if you're following along, don't feel as if you have to copy me exactly. If you don't want an arch here, don't put one. If you want a different rock formation, go ahead. If you want to, I don't know, just use this as like an idea and make a, put a castle here or something, go for it. Or even if you just want your arch to be a little differently shaped, go for it. Or if you want to call, call me exactly, that's fine. That is totally fine too. Now with one. Okay, so now put some highlights on that. Sometimes it's cool when you're doing like really rocky stuff like this, or like stuff that you don't want to be too uniform, is leave the paint a little marbled like that. So when we come to put it up here, it gets all these little like patterns of white and yellow in there. on those highlights.
Okay, um, so I'm going to put one more plane like in the foreground. What I mean by plane is like each like layer of the painting. Like there's each of the far mountains is one plane, this is one plane, 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 and one more plane. So this, I'm going to go almost straight up black. It's almost like a silhouette in front of us. So let's um, get another paper towel. Well, it was a little quiet this time. Sometimes you just kind of get in the zone of painting and forget what's happening. I'm like, oh, I'm, a, I'm at the library doing a program online. Right, I'm just having fun painting. And honestly, if that's what happens, Doing something right. I just paint it all myself. Knife it on it. Might get it on there a bit better.
I guess that's good enough. I don't have to be completely black. Okay, so let me go ahead and where did my knife go? I lost my knife. Uh, there you are. Okay, so I'm gonna add some pretty bright highlights on the front of this face. So let me get some, get some bright yellow. So no ochre. It's a red, some white. I think I'm gonna get some black. I'm gonna cover some of this rock in front of it. Or a big shadow. Good. Well, we're just about at time. So I think there's not much else to do except give this a sign. So we'll take some blue, mix it with a little bit of pink better. Until it's almost at the ink. Consistency. And let's go right here. Cool. Alright, that just about does it for our Rocky Desert painting. So, um, yeah, thanks for following along if you decided to. If not, thanks for watching. Hope these are uh, enjoyable for you guys. Enjoyable for me. Painting's fun. But um, yeah, if you have any 
if you've followed along and done any of these with us, um, share them, whether online or bring them to a library and show us in person. Or if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see, even stuff that isn't landscapes, like I'd like to do like portraits or like cool stuff like sci-fi and fantasy or whatever people want. Um, but yeah, we'll probably also be going back to doing these in person soon, hopefully. I'm not saying that as like an official statement or anything, but just hopefully the pandemic will be over soon and we can do things in person. Because, uh, yeah, I really miss having you guys here in front of me. So, uh, yeah, I guess have a good rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.